Hello and welcome to another set of championship predictions from the Art Ball Podcast. I'm Craig Seven, and with me as always is Daniel Cody and Charlie Betts. Let's have a quick recap of the three fixtures from midweek, where it was just a one perfect score. That was my 2 0 win for Chef Wednesday against Wickham. Chai got one point for every game, and Daniel Cody just a single point from the Chef Wednesday Wickham game as well. But I win it with four points to Charlie's three and Cody's one. So the table looks like this. I move on to 193 with 34 perfect scores. Daniel Cody is on 181 with 28 perfect scores. And Charlie Betts is on 168 with 24 perfect scores. So let's move on to match day 29. The first bit it's a Lancashire derby. It's Blackburn Rovers versus Preston North End. Codes, these two teams mixed in fortune. How did I know you'd be coming to me first for the two most unpredictable teams in the league? I have absolutely no idea. All we know is that Friday games, Friday night games on Sky Sports are normally quite entertaining. So we're going for goals. They're two fairly leaky defences, to use Charlie's terms. Although, until the Rotherham game at home, Preston had sort of tightened things up a bit. But they're, they're mixed bag even away from home now. They're starting to drop down the away table. They never draw on the road, though. Only one in 14 games. Blackburn at home are good. Blackburn are going to edge it. 3-2. Charlie? Yeah, I think just to add to the un- un- unpredictableness of it all, it being a derby as well, that obviously just throws the, you know, as we always cliched say, form goes out the window. I'm going to go the other way. I think just when you write a Preston, they come out with something. So I'm going to go for a, a Preston win, despite their erratic form. They obviously, the thing is as well, it's so hard. They lost to Rotherham at home the other day, but just when they're doing that, they then just pluck out a result from somewhere. And Blackburn, as great as they are going forward, sometimes uh, just cl- so erratic at the back of it, like their form. So, I don't know. Uh, it's, I don't like starting on a game with no logic, but that's where I'm going. So I'm going to go for a Preston win by two goals to one. But there's no, literally no numbers behind that whatsoever. I have to agree with you, Charlie. There is no numbers in it at all. But I think Preston, oh God. But Blackburn losing the QPR just throws a spanner in the works anyway, because I did say last week that they weren't great against Luton either. And they won the game 1-0. So I'm going to go 2-1 to Blackburn. Next up, it's Nottingham Forest versus Bournemouth. Forest up to third in the form table, Charlie, but Bournemouth two games on the return from Woodgate and it's two wins. Yeah, it is. I mean, the thing is as well, it takes a bit of momentum, obviously the, the result they got the other night in the FA Cup. Oh, I don't know. See, I've always backed Forest, and if, if, do you know what, genuinely, if it had been the other way around, Forest's away form has been in the last five, three wins and two draws. So you'd have backed them. At home, they're just a little bit more erratic. But I don't know. I don't know if Bournemouth are out of the woodshed of all of this. Ugh. My heart's saying that I should go with Forest, but my head is probably saying a Bournemouth win. Which I'm not going to go with. I'm going to go with Forest. A critical special, 1 0. Case. Uh, Bournemouth's most frequent result on the road this season is a draw. And at home, Nottingham Forest have drawn five games, which is as many as they've done anything else. The Bournemouth situation's a worrying one because it's Jonathan Woodgate featuring Harry Redknapp, as we've later found out by the looks of things, which is a bit of a bizarre one. He's clarifying his role somehow. He's not actually in the dugout. I think he's just there as an advisor. Oh, fair enough. But he's going to be having some form of impact there based on what we saw of Woodgate at Middlesbrough or he's learned an awful lot very quickly, which we could be fair to him. What I do worry about is Bournemouth don't score a lot of goals on the road prior to the FA Cup tie midweek, where they were very good, by the way. And Forest have had their troubles with goals at home. Their last home game is a nil-nil draw. So, do you know what? It's going to be out of the way in five minutes. I'm going nil-nil. Yeah, fair credit to Bournemouth. Obviously, two wins now on the Woodgate. Obviously, one against the Premier League side. Forest actually third in the form table. They turned the corner. They might have turned the corner under Hugh. And it's taking its time, but it's finally come into fruition. I think Forest might sneak this one, to be honest. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for 2 1 again. 2 1 to Forest. Right, moving on next at St Andrews. It's Birmingham City versus Luton. Uh, codes Birmingham, obviously, worst home form in the league. Luton, worst goal scorers away from home in the league. Nil-nil? Well, I'm tempted to go for two in a row. The one thing I'm almost certain of is that this game will be a draw. I can't see a circumstance in which it's not, unless it's a a 1-0 via an awful mistake. Oh, is someone going to nick it? I mean, there's every chance. If this is more than one all, I don't know what's going on. Do I think someone will nick it? No. one all. Championship's favourite scoreline. Charlie? Oh, I don't know. I agree with Dan, but then, albeit they lost the game, Birmingham then scored two against uh, Bournemouth. (laughs) And, oh, but then it's that, that was Woodgate's first game. I don't know. I think I have to back Luton, which normally means that Luton don't win. Um, so, Nathan Jones had a few more days to work with the, the, the new signings, etc. So, I'm banking on them turning up. Birmingham, I really don't know what, 
that was going on there. I, I, I don't like people losing their jobs, but how Karanka is still holding on to his job is a surprise, given other teams that have sacked managers recently, but we'll not go into that. 2-0 Luton Town. Yeah, I don't see many goals in this game. I don't expect it to be the best game, even though it's live in, on TV around the world, not obviously in the UK. I, I think Luton will actually sneak this one 1-0. One I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to take a 1-0 Luton win. Up next to the Cardiff City Stadium it is Cardiff versus Coventry. Uh, Charlie, Mick McCarthy actually had a pretty decent start. He has, he has, and to be fair, we, you know, they beat a very um, informed Rotherham team that we spoke about quite often. Just going by the stats, did it fairly convincingly in a sense. You know, gave away a bit of possession, but then more shots than Rotherham on target and stuff like that. So, you know, he's obviously got a style that's working. I think you got back Mick McCarthy again. Coventry away from home have been so drab. Is that the right word to use? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but they have not really exciting. And I just think it plays into Mick McCarthy's hands. He's going to be a bit buoyant, a bit confident. I don't see a lot of goals though. I'm going to go for a repeat of the other night. Two one Cardiff. Coach, this is where the form table can lie to you because those two wins, and in fact the three unbeaten on the road for Cardiff, puts them up to fourth all season in the championship away form. Coventry are in the bottom three on away form, so Charlie's certainly fair to use the word drab. But our home, Cardiff have been pretty poor most of the season, bar two blistering games they had. And it's just whether that's going to come now. As Charlie says, they've given away a bit more possession, but they're getting balls in the box. They're creating chances from wide areas. And I think that's going to be enough for them here. I think Coventry will draw a blank again and Cardiff will win comfortably 2-0. I, I don't expect a lot in this game, to be honest. Uh, I think Cardiff and Coventry is what score I actually want to go. Yeah, actually, no, screw, screw, screw the form book. Screw the form book. 3-1 Cardiff City. Up next at Pride Park, it is Derby County versus Millsborough. Uh, Courage, what's gone wrong for Millsborough? Your guess is as good as mine and Charlie's... OK, I'll ask Charlie then. <laughs> I have no idea, mate, honestly. I'm sure Neil Warnock's probably asking the same question. But I will say this. On the road, it's not gone too wrong recently. At home, four straight defeats, it's been disastrous. And against some of the sides they should be beating. But their last two away games, a very good goalless draw at Norwich and a win away at Nottingham Forest. So, Sorry, would you say there's a good goalless draw against Norwich even though they had an extra man? Yes. I, I, I don't care regardless. That's a good result for me. Any result against Norwich is going to be a positive one this season. But what's worrying me, Craig, and the big problem is Derby's last game against Rotherham, which is really throwing me out the way here because otherwise I would have been 1-0 Derby all day. But oh, how can you turn that quickly? And then they haven't played for a week and a half. So what do you judge it on? They're going to bounce back. 1-0 Derby. Stick with the original. I don't know about this game. I really don't because most away from home OK. They, can sc- they do score more away from home than they have been at home. Which, which Derby t- defensively turns up because if they defend if they defend properly they actually can keep a clean sheet but then if they lose concede one they concede three so it has a writing of a three three draw <laughs> wow <laughs> but I'm not going for three three oh, I would have gained so much respect for you <laughs> championship both score line one one Charlie. Yeah, I'll tell you how many you've got two teams that perform better when they have less possession of the ball. But obviously, that can't happen in a game. You can't have both teams with less possession. So, it's who then can adapt better to that. When Borough got thumped by Brentford 4-1, Neil Warnock was quite positive about his team and said it was actually a good performance. And as great as it is, as, as Brentford have been playing, still getting beaten 4-1, it's hard to come out like that. So, is he trying to deflect for something else is going on there? I don't know. Counter-attacking, 2-1 Derby County win. Up next at John Smith is Huddersfield versus Wickham. Charlie, the two worst teams in the league do you expect a four all <laughs> it could go that way but I, I don't know where Wickham are going to get four goals from with all due respect especially away from home I mean it's just lost lost minus 20 goal difference no clean sheets so I can't see Wickham getting a goal I mean Huddersfield are much much better at home albeit they lost two in the last five two nil two nil Huddersfield right. I think Huddersfield will win as well but I will say on the, the Huddersfield performance at Luton for about an hour they were atrocious um, right, Luton, yeah, I agree. I have Luton, to agree. Luton weren't a great deal better. Let me just get that out there before I get any stick. But Luton were doing enough to win it and then panicked as soon as a goal went in. Uh, quick question um, from that last game. Red cards for Topo, uh, Topolo? For me, yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a light red. But yeah, it is a red card for me, to be honest. Yeah, I, I thought it was a red. <laughs> a light red, a pink. A, a light red, but I wouldn't have been devastated if it was a yellow. I wouldn't have gone, oh, you've got to appeal that immediately, you know. But it, for red, fair enough. But Huddersfield are going to win this for me. It won't be a great game because Huddersfield, their early season form have dropped off. I got slated for putting them for a relegation pre-season and they are drifting quick. So for their sake, they need to win. And I think they will by the boring one goal to nil. Do you know what? I've got a funny feeling we can win this game. 
And that's not that's not like me to say I've got a funny feeling we're going to win this game. Yeah, I think they're going to do it. I think they're going to do it. I'll, I'll have to be disappointed in this if it doesn't go right. But I, I think we're going to win this one. I don't know, one or two. No, two one, two one. Yeah, I think they're going to stick this one two one. Reckon. Up next at Carrow Road, it is Norwich City versus Stoke. Um, Charlie Norwich obviously lost to Swansea in the previous game. They're now not well. They're now in second place. Would you be a bit wary of what's going on around them? They've got to be careful of what's going on around them. Yeah, Brentford are obviously in scintillating form at the minute. Reading uh, seem to be on a bit of a rise. Albeit I know they lost to Red- Brentford last night, but you know up to that point we're in better form. Swansea are just grinding out wins. So yeah, I think if you are Norwich, what's worrying me is the lack of goals. I believe uh, goal is in the last three. So I don't know. But then Stoke have drawn the last five uh, away from home. So I, I don't know. Part of me thinks is this a Michael O'Neill special turn up, but I don't think it's going to happen. It's either nil nil or one all. No, nil nil, no goals. I think both teams will fire a blank again. Nil nil. Okay. I'm going a completely different way on this. I'm, I'm using Charlie's uh, Brentford approach, which is now that we're, uh, Norwich are off the top of the league, the pressure's gone. So I've got a feeling Norwich are going to come back to form this weekend because Stoke <laughs> have lost over, have drawn over half their away games. So Stoke are going to be playing for a nil-nil. I think that's fair to say based on their recent away results or a one-all if they get an early goal. And I think Norwich will have too much. They've still been solid defensively. It's just the goals that have dried up. But it'll come back this week. It's going to be either 2-0 or 2-1. I'm going to go for 2-0 to Norwich. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you, Coates. For a Norwich win. So yeah, Stoke, no wins in the last... Oh, nine games. Yeah, I, I generally think Norwich will bounce back, really. Uh, I, think once they, I think Norwich just need to get that first goal. Once they get their first goal, I think they need to run right again. Yeah, no one's scored, really. Ben Deere, obviously, uh, hopefully should be back. So that would be a big boost for Norwich anyway. But I, yeah, I think they'll win this one. 2-0. I'm going to say 2-0 as well. I agree with you. 2-0. Uh, I'll go 2-1 I'll go then. Up next to the Majeski Stadium, it is Reading versus Millwall. Coach, um, Millwall, to be fair to them, they've been an awful run midway through the season, but they've actually bounced back quite well. They have, but I did say in midweek when we were talking about the Sheffield Wednesday game, don't get too excited by it. I know Millwall dominated the shots, the shots on target and all of that, but the Opta stats and three of their goals were brilliant goals. They're goals that aren't going to go in every week. We've got to be fair about that. So in terms of clear-cut chances, I don't know they created any more, but it was a much-improved performance. And the fact that nearly all of the strikers picked up a goal each is going to be a massive bonus for them. And the fact their left-backs turned into the best player in the world is absolutely incredible for them. Reading defeated against Brentford. It ends a long, unbeaten run in the league, but it's how they react to that. Both teams have got two nil-nil draws in their last four. So do you know what? I'm going to be boring. It's going to be a nil-nil draw. Uh, I totally disagree, to be honest. Uh, that being the new draw, obviously, yeah, Redden played a tough Brentford side. So, obviously, that's always going to be a tough game. I think Redden will easily create more chances than Newell will, to be fair. And it's just obviously taking them chances. Uh, yeah, I think Redden will bounce back 2 0. Charlie? I think Redden will win. I, three of the last five home games for Redden, they've scored three goals. So, I'm going for another three with a little one at the other end. Yes, they will. 3 1 Redden. And I'm only saying that because I don't think. As great as Mill have been, their clean sheets away from home are pretty pants. So, uh, and once Reading get one, they tend to capitalise on that. So, three one Reading. Up next at the New York Stadium, it is Rotherham United versus Queens Park Rangers. This uh, a few weeks ago, we could have probably said this is probably the worst game of the weekend. But actually, when you think about it, both teams on pretty good form, Cody. Yeah, I mean that Luton game has changed QPR season, albeit it coincided with Charlie Austin coming back, which may have had something else to do with it. Rotherham in good form until the Cardiff game. And actually, in reverse to earlier in the season, they're now more convincing on the roads, taking out the Derby game. Albeit the home defeats were both against the Welsh sides, who are good teams. QPR always set up better for the road. They've got a better form table away from home this season. And I think they're going to nick it. I'm going to go for QPR to nick it 2-1. Charlie? Yeah, I, I see where Dan's coming from. I think there'll be more goals. And what throws it in there for me is that Rotherham 3 all draw with Stoke. With QPR... Like Mark Warburton obviously has turned a corner as such, but one thing you always get with Mark Warburton is great going forward, but you're always going to get a le- always going to let a goal in. So I think there's going to be goals in this 3 2 QPR. I don't know about this game actually, well, I, even though I've like, built it up quite well, I actually don't know. <laughs> you both made good points, uh, but yeah, which which one turns up? I'm going to go for a Desmond 2 2. Up next at Hillsborough, it is Sheffield Wednesday versus Swansea. Uh, Swansea, brilliant performance against Norwich City, goes. Yeah, and I watched them against um, City the other night, and they weren't bad then either. So, or last night, as we were recording this, actually. Uh, it was a decent performance. They played some good football. 
Sheffield Wednesday were convincing against Wickham. We mentioned that they were probably unfortunate to lose so heavily at Millwall. And otherwise, they've been in good form as well, particularly at home. And not even that, they very rarely concede a goal at home under Neil Thompson. And that's the thing that's thrown me here, because the Swansea 2-0 win is a very famous scoreline on this podcast and has worked on many occasions. But Sheffield Wednesday just don't concede two at home. Swansea have, have pushed themselves up the league now. Them and Brentford are going to be the ones feeling the pressure. I think Sheffield Wednesday are going to nick this. I'm going to go for, oh, 2-0. 2-0 Wednesday? 2-0 Wednesday. No one's uh, copying Charlie. that. <laughs> no. Charlie, I guess no. that's going for. I mean, they've won, won five out of the last five at home. But Swan, Swansea always seem to score two, don't they? Every game they, oh, I don't know. See, the cop-out is to go for 2-0 Swansea. And I'm going to do that, 2-0 Swansea. <laughs> I think... I, I know what you're saying about obviously the, the whole Millwall game, but it's gonna. I think that'll knock them a little bit. I, I know that they've been in good form, but I still think it'll have a bit. It's gonna have an effect on you. So Swansea have just been class. And I think the difference is, is you look at Swansea; they've got experience throughout that side as well, and they've been consistent throughout the whole season. So for me, I think they'll carry that on. Two 0 Swansea City. Yeah, I'm not gonna go the same way with Charlie on the Swansea win. To be honest, like that when you're on form, you're on good form. But the Championship, you know, the, the other side of me, the Championship can just play havoc on form guide as well. Yeah, obviously, yeah, Chef, Chef Wednesday. Obviously, fifth in the table on the form. So, you have to give them credit what, what's the turnaround they've had since Tony Peters got the sack. But I think this will be a game too much for them, in my opinion. And I'm going to go... I'm going to go 3 1. 3 1 Swansea. Up next at Vickers Road, it is Watford versus Bristol City. Charlie, Bristol City, worst in form in away games. Do you see that happen, uh, continuing? Watford have been stout at home. They beat Norwich 1-0, for example, with stuff like that. It's, they're not set the world alight. One and two nil wins here at home. So, But Bristol City away from home have just been fairly, well, I don't want to say a bad word, but they've been terrible, to be brutally honest. So, And they do leak goals, it's, but Watford don't score many. For me, it's a Watford win. It's by what scoreline? It's one, one or two nil. Cody? I think it's fairly clear cut as well. Bristol City are finally no longer inconsistent. They are just poor on the road recently. I don't, they've got the eight defeats away from home. Only two teams in the league with more away defeats. Watford have got 10 wins at home. No other side is in double figures. They've got the best home record in the league. And for all of their troubles away from home, the only thing that's throwing me is that QPR game two weeks ago. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have any doubts about this. But I don't think that's enough to judge it on. So the scoreline is going to be flipped. Watford are going to win 2-1. And Bristol City... I am starting to worry about Dean Holden because the fans weren't massively on board beforehand, so he could be in a bit of trouble. Yeah, we're all going to have to agree on what to win. I don't know what's gone wrong in the Bristol City away from home. Do you know what? I think it's going to be probably the first convincing win Watford had in a very long time. So I'm going to go for 3-0. 3-0 Watford. And the final game on Sunday is Brentford versus Barnsley. Charlie, Brentford, obviously, they beat Red in midweek. They've had tough games in that running as well, but very tough game. How big of a step was that to go, though? Well, yeah, I think like I think we might have alluded to it before. Previous years, there, there was a chance they would have maybe folded under that pressure or, you know, in a few games, they've gone a goal down and then, you know, that kind of thing. But they've got a bit more experience in that team now. They've got players who've been around that area before. So I think if they're going to play a team after having such a tough game, Barnsley is probably the one you want because in 27 games, they've only kept four clean sheets all season. One of those was a draw against Derby earlier on in the season when Derby were, you know, being very Derby under Koku. So I don't know. I can't I can't see Barnsley getting a win here. I think there'll be other games where there'll be an obvious, looks like an obvious win for Brentford and then it'll it'll flip and they'll, they'll lose it. But I don't think that's going to be this weekend. Bottle it, 3-0. Okay. I don't know about this game because... Barnsley against Forest two weeks ago, they dominated the stats. They had two clear-cut chances. They had tripled the shots on target, doubled the shots overall. And they conceded more possession, which suggested a slight change in tact for them from recent games. But Brentford are just scintillating. They've passed the 20-game mark unbeaten. They're top of the away form table. They're second in the home form table and top of the actual table. So what more can they do? Don't forget, this is a repeat of the final game last season where Brentford just lost out in the final seconds and Barnsley stayed up. And I wonder if that's going to play on the mind. So, do you know what? I've gone for, for ballsy, ridiculous scores all day. So, let's have it. Championship's favourite scoreline to finish. One all. No, I totally disagree with what you're saying, to be honest. I have to agree with Charlie. Barnsley, I think Barnsley probably a bit tired. Obviously, they're playing uh, in the FA Cup tonight or Thursday, the time of recording. Brentford, yeah, they're flying. But once they get one, they can get easily get two or three. And to be fair, three away at Reading and three away against Middlesbrough. Very, very impressive. But they do tend to concede the goals well, as Charlie said. They, don't, they haven't kept the clean sheet. Uh, in a while, I think Luton was the last game they kept the blue sheet. So, yeah, I think but, uh, Brentford will win this one 3-1. 
And let's have a quick recap of what we just predicted for match day 29. Uh, Daniel Cody's only gone for one away win over in his predictions. And that was QPR to beat Rotherham. Uh, also, again, Charlie's going to go for a five goal thriller on three to the QPR. And I, for the first time, gone for three, three ones, which is very rare because I'm normally just sticking to two or less. And that is it for objections. Do you agree with us or do you disagree with us? Let us know in the comment section down there. And, and while you're down there, give this video a like, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.